the Digital Product Playbook podcast, hosted by Steadfast Collective. The Digital Product Playbook is a monthly playbook of insightful articles, thoughts on building and growing digital products. I'm Pete Heslop, and today I'm joined by Danielle of Soldo. Hi. Great. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. Um, So I joined Soldo uh, since the very beginning of Soldo. And uh, I always uh, take uh, took care of the product and design team. And uh, uh, to give you a little bit of background on me, uh, I I have a background in philosophy, and uh, I also started uh, working in the video game industry. And then uh, I did it for some time, and then uh, I had opportunity to work with other. Uh, products and companies uh, helping even friends on developing things and then at a certain point I had the opportunity to jump into the fintech uh, world and <laughs> fintech industry and uh, so am I. Amazing. So your role kind of is everything to do with the product at Soldo? Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, and what does Soldo do? To explain to the to listener what Soldo might, might Soldo help is a business payment solution, uh, which basically uh, gives you the possibility to manage your expenses uh, in in the company. So we we aim to give the possibility to delegate payments uh, in a company, so that. Uh, you shouldn't be any more uh, bothered with uh, uh, going uh, after the credit card of, of the CEO or yeah. the top management. Yeah, yeah. So that every employee can have a, his own card and spend the company money yeah. and be focused on what they have yeah. to do in their, in their company. So what I love about um, Soldo is, so I actually knew of the product before, for, before I met yourself um, at Startup Grind. Um, and I love the idea that I'm able to also make virtual cards for some people who don't leave the office, but potentially are buying licenses, that kind of stuff. Um, and you can revoke them as quick as you can issue them. So if someone leaves, you haven't got, you don't have the issue of getting back the card and stuff. Correct. Just, or you could even, um, I guess, if you were paying for something for a client, you could issue a card and then, you know, just revoke it when needed. And it's just a lot more flexibility rather than being like, did I forget to cancel it? Et exactly. Et for for media agencies and design agency, that would be, it's the perfect use case because you can manage your clients with virtual cards and check whether you have expenses on the clients and even claim back possible money and, and, and such. Amazing. So it's, yeah. And are you finding quite a wide variety of, um, industries and businesses are using Soldo or is it primarily at the moment digital businesses kind of in the agency space? Actually, it's uh, it's quite a variety, but yeah, but most of uh, the, the main use cases, let's say, are uh, either digital agencies or uh, wherever they have a sales representative. Okay. So when ha- uh, you have a company where people goes around to, um, to sell products and so uh, travel and expenses uh, of, of such yeah. things. So. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so you're here today to share three lessons you've learned in kind of working with Soldo and kind of in the digital space, uh, digital product space as a whole. So why don't we jump in with your first lesson? Sure. So uh, my at the moment my uh, my whole world is around uh, uh, scaling up the the business. So we are at a point where we are growing like uh, very uh, like crazy, I would say. And so uh, I I keep noticing that things keep changing. So one, the first, my first advice would be embrace it mm. because things uh, are, are not going to be still ever. Mm. And probably if, uh, if things are, are start to be, are starting to be still, uh, there is some kind of problem, uh, I, I think, because uh, in a way, I think innovation comes with, uh, with, with changes. And uh, if you, if you, s- stay with your open mind and, and try to to work and adjust your your behavior also your development around the product uh, with the idea that things are going to change uh, that i think is the is the best way and i always think of uh, of uh, philosophers saying that uh, um, you you cannot pass twice in in the same river which is which is true because i don't know if you uh, ever happened to you like uh, opening a book for the second time or watching a movie for the second time, yeah. you always see things that uh, ha- have 
changed in a way because you have changed or because the the, con the context around you has changed yeah. so you see things in a in a different way and there is always room for for improvement on that that's good and are you finding a lot of those changes are coming through from the sales team from your customers from your product team where where's a lot of the changes coming from from the business as all well, okay. because uh, uh, coming from the sales uh, you discover that uh, there is a new application for your product uh, so a new use case that you have to support in a way or there is a new thing that uh, uh, you have better understood in a way that uh, that that was really the pain that you have to yeah. to solve for for your user so even in terms of uh, internal communication and structure of the product team itself, it's something that uh, you help have always um, uh, adjust in a way and uh, to be to, to be on top of it. Okay, and do you, is it um, how do you find kind of managing which one to focus on first? Because obviously, there's probably I imagine in I may be wrong, but I imagine in my own experience of running digital products. There's an element of firefighting, fixing things and making things better behind the scenes and also the shiny new features which you really want to get to your customers. Is there kind of a balancing act in your team of, of trying to manage both? Uh, yeah, basically there is always uh, a little bit of fight uh, because uh, it, it's a normal tension mm. and in this you have to always find a balance because uh, you have to take care of, of your users and uh, uh, in a way taking care of your users uh, uh, brings you to this duality where um, you have to polish the product that you have uh, out of in the market and at the same time you have to bring new things mm. so that uh, the experience can be more complete and more uh, um, more towards the hedge of, of the possible yeah. innovator you know, innovation you are after yeah always so, a balancing act yes fantastic great lesson so um, leads us on to lesson two what do you have for lesson two um you have to believe in what you do uh and this is something that i learned uh, since the since ever because because um uh i i have this uh, weird um background of having studied philosophy yeah. and then moving into this tech industry and primarily my my decision was based exactly in, into this so i i strongly believed in what i did so in, in my in my choices and i think that that paid back in the end mm. especially because uh, uh, it can give you uh, more motivation in doing things mm. and uh, if you if you really believe in uh, in the product that you're doing in the things that you're doing it can help you again in the uh, in in the communication of uh, of developing your product yeah. because you have really understood uh, how things um, how things can can be motivating other people so by the fact that uh, I really like what I do it's easier for me to convince you that uh, that is our goal and yeah. uh, it's easier to share objectives it's easier to to have uh, uh, to find a common ground in a way you know? yeah well if, if you don't believe in your product then why should anybody else you're the person working on it so I think that's really important and um, I think that's also a, a really good point that when you are thinking about new features or changes you, you have to really think you know is this something that I'm gonna really like something our customers are gonna really like because you have to be fully behind what you're doing otherwise when it you know it's a late night or something's gone wrong and you've got to kind of fight for something um, you've got to really believe in what you're doing because otherwise what's you know it's going to exactly. be hard for you to dig deep it's going to be easier for you just to, to run exactly um, and there's obviously when you are starting up there's a lot of effort that goes in um, a lot of pressure um, and you have to deliver and if ultimately you're not fully behind that that idea then you're kind of probably at the wrong place yeah that's correct fair comment. and that's why I encourage always uh, uh, people working with me to have to, to follow their attitude in a mm. way, you know, because uh, even, even uh, I don't know, from the design point of view, there is uh, the, this whole discussion about UX and UI and, and, and these different nuances of approaching the, the work of designing or even, uh, of even developing uh, the product. And uh, everyone has, I think, his own approach. 
and if you force that approach into somebody else uh, it, it risks that uh, it miss that motivation that is mm. i think required to to achieve the the completion of the task yeah so in a way uh, i think that's uh, the the best way to to collaborate and to uh, to share the same uh, same purpose is to is to believe in what you do and how yeah. you do it how, how big is the the team you you work on at the moment uh, we are uh, a relatively small team for what we uh, kindly deliver. Okay. Uh, we are a team of nine okay. between product managers and designers yeah. and uh, uh, UX writers and, yeah. and researchers. And, yeah. and especially when you are a team which is slightly more lean than potentially you know um, a company which is started up and and kind of running full steam. Um, you have that's even more important. That culture is even more important because if you've got one person in a team of say ten who isn't fully on board, that, that's a real drain on everybody else. Exactly. Um, so that culture is, is even more important when exactly. you are a lean team because it kind of there's no room for anybody to hide, is there? Everybody's fully on show because there's no, there's no hiding spaces. Correct. And if you are not comfortable with it, uh, it could be a problem. Yeah, definitely. Great, and uh, takes us on to our final lesson. What's our final lesson here? Yes, it, it would be taking care of your users for exactly who they are. Okay. So that is a lesson that I've uh, um, I've learned uh, moving from the consumer uh, uh, product development, so from video games and other apps and stuff, to um, to this world of B two B, so business related. So basically, uh, moving forward, uh, uh, moving yeah forward from the family size or uh, on to the community size of a, of a company mm -hmm. uh, there are a, a lot of challenges that goes uh, with uh, along with your users what i mean is that a bit at the beginning you have a handful of users uh, helping you to to grow your product uh, so giving you uh, feedback and insights uh, and uh, everything that uh, it goes with the alteration if you want uh, in, a, in a very strong way of your product so from day to night uh, and day after day mm. uh, it keeps changing radically almost uh, but that is uh, something that again uh, growing your business uh, you have to stop in a way you have to really understand your your audience and in our case the the, the, the business one is quite um, particular because uh, a business uh, have to rely on your product uh, in a way and that is the case of soldo so you cannot change things uh, as uh, uh, as any other i don't know any other yeah. product where you have actually chosen it mm -hmm. so most of the time if not uh, uh, almost 100 percent of the time we we sell our product uh, to a company that uh, approves there is a decision making process to approve the co that that um, the product, uh, so adopting Soldo, and at that point, uh, it, it's been a decision company to use Soldo, and uh, that card, uh, the Soldo card, goes to an employee, yep. and that employee maybe hasn't decided to to adopt Soldo. Sure. So if you disrupt the experience uh, for it, for the employee, it could be a real pain for him mm. because uh, there is no alternative uh, for him to pay for with something else because that is the that was the company decision. Yeah. So we have to be careful in managing um, managing the, the this kind of products uh, in the in, especially in the business environment. Yeah. Yeah. That that kind of saying of move fast and break things doesn't really work when you work in finance, does it? Because people are literally relying on that. Like all of a sudden, if you know there's a there's a problem and someone's literally relying on it to buy their train tickets or something, that's exactly. a massive issue. And I guess the. the a lot of your industry is, is trust, isn't it? Like if, if something doesn't work once or twice, that could pit somebody off for a long time before they pick it up again. So you Correct. have to make sure um, that it's, it's, it's kind of flawless from, uh, how, how do you find, it, it is, so you said you have quite um, a community which you talk to about feedback. H how are you gathering that feedback? Is it through email? Do you have, um, is it through an app or? Um, we have uh, email communication, okay. but we also have uh, a lot of interviews with them. Okay. So we try to, to stay in touch with them, uh, trying to really understand uh, uh, their point of view. And I think in this specific case, empathy, but uh, actually in, 
in product development in general empathy is a very uh, uh, is very important is a key factor yes to to have because you have to understand what's going on and and feel the, the same pain otherwise uh, you wouldn't realize uh, what is important and what is not yeah no, that's good that's good and have you so so we run a we run a digital product as well it's, it's, a, it's a hosting platform um and we find that we we get some really really good feedback like we we are often surprised how willing people are to give you feedback both negative and positive which is fantastic um sometimes we get feedback which is great um, and it's often feature requests but it doesn't quite fit with who we are do you often receive feedback where you're like that's a great idea it's not quite where we're trying to go but we understand you we're, we're listening to you but it's not quite what we want to do do you receive that kind of feedback yeah of course it happens because yeah. uh, uh, one thing is being on the on the side of the company where you have a mission mm. you have a clear statement of your your uh, your vision and on the other side there is the user yeah. that uh, uh, ha have uh, um, the users have certain objectives and may or not uh, um, coincide with yours so in a way the role of uh, uh, the product development is to try to align the objective of the user with the one of the companies try to uh, combining the two uh, for a, a successful product yeah in in the book um, rework by the team that built Basecamp um, they talk about how when you receive a product re uh, like a feature request um, you don't need to write them down because if it's a good feature request you'll hear it all the time and people will just keep telling you it and that's when you will remember it and be like actually maybe we should take action on that one um, but sometimes people want really wild features which don't fit fit your bill um, and then you know like you said it, you know you you have to align everything because otherwise you could end up with this product which is kind of everything to everybody but really bad at one thing which is what you're trying to do in the first place and it's it's that balancing act again isn't it of trying to make sure you're kind of staying online while pleasing the customer almost yeah yeah even though i have to confess that lately i start writing down uh, the 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 weird requests yeah, okay because uh, uh, you never know yes in a way yeah, in, yeah. in a way those things can be actually uh, finding the the right scope within your company mm. and uh, if you if you didn't pay attention too much to, to them it could be that they are forgotten and that could have been a, a good opportunity okay so that's fair. you never know <laughs> did you just want to kind of summarize your three points so just kind of walk us through kind of the headlines titles of each sure one. Uh, so things uh, keep changing so embrace the the change uh, believe in what you do and how you do it to give motivation and uh, take care of your users uh, exactly for who they are fantastic thank you so much for your time today um, i know you are in a really busy period at the moment so i really appreciate it where can people find out more about soldo if they want to get in touch with you um Soldo on the website, yep. so uh, soldo.com, uh, it would be uh, easy. And uh, with me uh, on LinkedIn. Okay, fantastic, on LinkedIn, super. Well, um, thanks again for your time and um, look forward to the next one. Great. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thank you.